off towards him. How are you? Very good. We'll start, shall we? Just start, yeah. yeah. Okay. Fabrice, this, uh, this is a sort of pivotal, poignant spot um, that we've stood on here. Uh, your initial thoughts on returning to this place? It doesn't get easy. You know. This is where my dream was just taken away from me, you know. I, I suppose that the emotions in many ways are, are really mixed, aren't they? Because, you know, ultimately, whilst your career was taken away from you, you know, it's a miracle that you're actually here to return to this spot, isn't it? Of course, it's, it's unbelievable what has happened. And to be able to leave again and to enjoy life is great, but... Oh! It's okay. All I, I wanted to do is to play football. Yeah. You know. But... The decision was taken away from me because of what's happened, you know, but as you said, it's just one of those things in life where you just have to swallow it and move forward, but I said it. Play, players' careers always come to an end. Of they come to an end at different, different stages of life. Yeah. Yours came, you know, under very unusual circumstances. Do you remember anything of, of, of what happened on that evening? No, it's not that any other game. You look forward to go watch football, you look forward to go play a game. And especially if you've not been in, into, in a team for a long time and you know the manager said you began playing. You know, for me, I was just preparing to go. And I'm, I remember missing a chance of scoring a goal. And I come back and literally about here by myself, nobody around me. And I felt very, very dizzy. Very so if I get to focus on you, I see double mm. view, and all of a sudden I just, you know, fell was down. Was there a pain or a there, was, there was no pain, there was oh. no sign, it kind of happened, you know, it just happened. Mm. You know, I remember my father was sitting, you know, down there, and my, bu my dad and my brother came to watch the game, so. And Sean at home with the kids watching the game, so it just. Have, have they expressed to you what, I mean, must, for them it must have been um, terrifying. My, my, my dad is. He lives this every day, yeah. you know. And you know, Joshua was watching the game and he's telling Sean that daddy get up on TV. So he, to him, he knows I had an accident. And mm. It affected them more and it also affected me even more now. So Before it happened, when you, you were playing in the game, did you, did you feel normal? Did you feel it was, fine? I was fine. I, mean, yeah. I was like, you know, coming towards the game, coming to the game like any, any other players, look forward to play a football game. And it just, out of nowhere, it just happened. Have you ever watched it back? Twice. And twice you have, twice. Twice. And the first time was by force. And the second by time. By force in, in, in what sense? I, I just, you know, mum's like, watch it, watch it. I was like, I don't want to watch it, just watch it. Yeah. Then I watch it, and I was like, I don't feel right. And the, the part where I felt that, I was like, this is me going, I was mm. gone, you know? And the second time, I was like, Maybe I just wanted to do this for myself so I can just put closure to it. And I, I did it, and that was it. And since then, I've never watched it again. I don't, I don't think I'll be able to watch it, God knows when, but not, 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 not now. now. Not now. Nah. And after it happened, your next, your next memory? Just waking up with white dressing gowns. You know, you woke up with white dressing gowns, and what happened on, Saturday evening and I woke up on a Monday but I didn't know if I was in the right place because I thought I'd be home and you know looking forward to go training but because I was so 
drug that we or the medicine that was taken and I could barely hold the conversation up so it was more of like a little high then I went back to sleep again you know and when I came around when the first day then you know you see people coming in your, in your room you think what's going on here but nobody didn't want to tell me anything mm. and the doctor just explained to me what happened I didn't believe at first I thought now what come on but when they say exactly what happened then you realize the magnitude of it is like wow mm. and and you, your heart stopped for a long time the, the, the sort of time that you think well how can that be surely uh, guys I'm one of one of these people in this world where I don't know if I can say I'm lucky or I'm blessed or whatever it is it just to this day I, it buffers me like how can I be so long gone and I'm still here at the mm. same time, you know. It, but I, I'm thankful and I'm grateful for unbelievable medical staff I could ask and wish for. I had four doctors here, one cardiologist, ambulance which was 10 seconds away from me. You know, not everybody have that kind of, you know, that situation. And I, I said, I'm just one of those people, I cut myself very, very lucky. At what stage was it that you were made aware of the fact that that you wouldn't be able to play professional football again? After my second, because seeing a doctor, second visit to, to the specialist in Belgium, Pedro Bugada, who had a, you know, who created the pacemaker, I went to see Pedro. Hopefully, that he can just get touch tried to kill off all the irregular heartbeat. I had too much of it. And you know, Pedro did everything and his staff did everything they could have done. It just wasn't happening. And from there and then he just told me for this, I think it's best that you call it a day. So it wasn't necessarily initially that you thought you'd miss the game that much. When 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 did that really start to hit home? You know when the doctor told me he's you know not gonna play football, I was like, okay it's fine. But I just want pre season star and every you switch on TV, you hate this, you watch pre-season two and it's just like, I should be there with the boys, you know, I sh should be hanging around and having a laugh and a joke and playing the game. And that's really started to kick in. I couldn't face it. There was time where, you know, I woke up in the morning, got dressed, looked like I'm going to training ground. And she said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to training. I said, no, 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 you're not going to go there. You know, it's like, then all of a sudden that kicked in as well. Mm -hmm. So, but as I said, the reality is that I couldn't do it anymore. Mm. I couldn't do it. I wish I could do it, but I've been advised not to. What's the What's the worst thing about not playing football? You and I know, Gary. <laughs> I miss the atmosphere in and around the place. I'm sure those who work in the banks will tell you, that, you know, the atmosphere is great, but there's nothing being in around the change room. The boys that you have a laugh and a joke and and just playing football and uh, that's to me and, and also it hurts me when I watch a game and uh, somebody doesn't try to me it's like it's like can we swap out here you yeah. can have mine I can have yours you know, you know just say come on but it, it, it just uh, and I suppose also I mean you know a lot of people are quite critical of, of footballers these days they say they earn too much money they don't care anymore it doesn't mean that much but it, it, it's about playing the game uh, it, 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 there's nothing else there's nothing else but playing a football game yeah the money will come when you play but that feeling of running around here and tackling and you know hitting the ball and making that contact and having that face moment with you and an opponent you know you you can't buy that Priceless. And there you were, FA Cup quarter final. Yeah. At one moment, you, you're dreaming about the possibility of perhaps playing in an FA Cup final, and the next minute, your career is on the line. Uh, you know, it's like, it's, like I said, I woke here like it was yesterday. You know, one minute, uh, I, like, my mum and dad live not far from here, yes. so I know how this place worked real well for me. You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're paying. And they were proud. All of a sudden, what happened? The dream—it wasn't by force taken away from me. You know, I had to listen to the advice of three specialists, 
and just you know accept accept and then move forward. But it, you know the first couple of months has been hard, but now it's just you watch from distance and you wish the boys all the best. That's what you can do really. And now for you, Fabrice, what is life? Hold. Life, um, life is great. You know, you you, you get to, to see from the other side of it, and um, you are appreciate those who do a lot for the people who play in it. And um, you know, you also I'm on Malawi at uni, studying sport journalism. So hopefully, I get to interview later on. That's what we all end up doing, you know. <laughs> That's what we all end up doing. As soon as you can't play anymore, no, but the thing about it, for whatever reason. Yeah, the thing about it, you're, you're not like everybody, so it's different. You know, <laughs> your, state, your, your bar is here. All of us are just trying to reach that level, but it's, it's different, you know. And uh, you enjoy life, and I've, I've enjoyed coming watching the game. And, and, uh, I, when I go watch the game, and those knows me, I don't go, I don't sit down from the start to big to the end. Just when. Just before the referee start the game, that's, not, that, that's when I will walk in and sit down and have a watch the game because I cannot watch it from the moment they start warming up and all that. Why? It kills Emotional. me. Ah, yeah. guys, just like to me, I'm like I, sh I still I, I should be there with the boys. Still like, now. I can't, yeah. Listen, I cannot watch a game from start the warm up and you know the line up and shaking hand and thinking. It's me, man. Yeah. You know, it yeah. kills me. But what can I do? It's just how I see it. You feel a little bitter in any way? Never. No. Never. No. I, I don't. I don't feel bitter in towards it or in any player. I just just sad. It's hard to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't watch much of the day, so I had. I remember watching it. He was talking about it, so I had my iPod on. And I was like, oh. Can't be talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to be talking about you in that sense, honestly. So uh, I was like, oh, it's pretty cool. But, but it's just like every Saturday yeah. I watch the game. It was, it was very difficult. Very, very difficult. We had to rip up the whole script that night and Seriously. start again for the show, yeah. Because it was such an you know, amazing story. But, and we didn't have the rights yeah. the FA Cup at that stage. Yeah. We have them back now. but. At that stage, we we were doing the Premier League okay, highlights, yeah. but it became such a Huge big start. thing that we we start we just ripped up the running order, started again, started with you at the top of the show, and um, yeah, it was yeah. and you know the whole nation was was, oh. was gripped to the story and pulling for you. And I, I think my st the way I see it, it's okay, but I think you should hear from Shona's my wife how she explains it. I'm like, I don't know how you deal with it, yeah, because she was on the train without knowing if I would be alive or dead. She doesn't know that. She's just coming on the train. I can't remember if I actually saw him fall down, but became aware of it very quickly if I didn't. And then I saw the team physio and then doctor running out and you could see them starting CPR. So it's at that point realised that something more was going on than a normal injury. 